So, got my nutrients and vitamins for the day. Thought I might as well, may as well show you the, uh, we're still open. We're still getting things done here. Get we're, oh yeah. Ah! Oh yeah. Okay. All right, I'm supposed to be isolated, but we are definitely still open and uh, we're making as many use as we can, as quick as we can during these isolation periods. Um, we've got deliveries and everything's still functioning as normal here. So we're, uh, we're trying to just get it done as good as we can. So where we finished on the last episode, uh, we had the harness in the car and I was starting to branch it out off into different sections and starting cutting the wires down to length. So I've got my injector wires all cut down to length, oil pressure cut down to length, the coolant temperature, which has been relocated on this particular engine, that's cut down to length. Um, these will be the gearbox temps and the speed sensor and this will be our power crank sensor starter uh, there is the knock sensor for that bank here as well and the ground so we're going to try and find a good ground for this to go to um, once you break it down it actually does all make a lot of sense um, you can see distinctly where these are all starting to go and how they all work on the engine, we've got our two banks and then our two temp or pressure and temp sensor. Um, so now all I'm gonna do is add in some power wires, which I did on this side in the car. I'm gonna do it on this side out of the car. Um, I think doing it out of the car is gonna be a little bit easier. Uh, wrangling this in and out of the car as I did it was a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna do it out of the car on this side just because it saves a bit of mess and then we're going to go through and do a bit of uh, braid cover or the sheathing we're going to do some of that out of the car on some of the stuff that i know is at the right length the knock sensor i don't know where it's actually going to go yet because i've still got them sitting here on the bench so i don't quite know where they're going to go uh, i know where, how long the cam sensor is going to be because i measured that so i can cover that one and put a plug on it we can put, also put the plugs on the injectors today as well. gone and crimped my injector power um, which is splitting off into eight separate power wires um, I've used these uh, ratcheting crimpers which I found on eBay on the internet um, these can do all different sorts of dies and um, crimps um, RS components is where I get all these crimps from um, super handy and turn up almost the same day if you order them in the morning um, because I'm in Sydney um, they've got a hub in Sydney um, and it literally turns up that afternoon so it doesn't matter how ill prepared I am um, they're always there to at least get what parts I need sometimes they're a little bit more expensive but it turns up really really quickly <laughs> know that from where we measured and made the grommet um, in the firewall or in the tunnel um, I've marked that off with a bit of tape um, so I know that that's where that's going to sit um, I marked it with a different type of tape so at least it stands out from everything else that's here um, often I use like a red or a green or a stripy uh, tape um, just to signify that it is actually different and it's there for a reason um, so we know where that one's going to sit these are all the interior wires that we need to also make sure that we loop them back in or straight on because they're going to go to other places in the car. Um, so what we're going to start doing now 
is using some braid at least to start from back here, use my ignition wires, and at least I know that from here to here, I need a thick piece of braid that is going to uh, cover at least this part of the loop. You just saw me crimp eight wires together um, into the other power supply wire from the relay. Um, that is just how I like to do the wiring. I've got access to plenty of spools of wire because I do often end up doing a lot of uh, injector looms for people. Um, but if you weren't um, if you weren't able to get that much wire, um, you don't have that much on hand, there's a lot of other different ways you could do it. Um, you could, for example, bring all those wires up and then do a branch off. So you could simply branch off the existing fat current wire and run that fat current wire all the way to the very last injector of the ones that you were doing. So let's just say for the fourth one you were doing, you can split a bit of wire there, split a bit of wire there. Simply twist those together. Um, this is how I used to do my looms um, when I first started off on my very own car. Um, this is how I learned how to do all of this. Um, I would then pop that up there, throw a little bit of solder on there. Controversial, I know a lot of people don't believe that solder belongs in an engine bay. Um, I don't mind either way personally. I have never personally had a solder join fail on me, um, but that's all absolutely personal. Um, what I do actually find easier, and this has got nothing to do with solder versus crimping, I just find crimping a lot easier and a lot faster. Um, we throw the crimp simply in there. Grab our crimpers, give that a quick squeeze on the bigger setting, then the middle setting, just give it a quick pinch. And now that's going to go off to one injector. And then we simply measure and repeat the process again. And it's often nice to use a smaller gauge for your injector power. Um, it just makes it a bit easier when you're trying to move this loom through the car. Um, if you only want to use the bigger wire, um, you can do that, don't get me wrong. You absolutely can do that if that's all you've got. Um, it just makes the loom really bulky and chunky. So um, again, we can just throw a real small crimp across there. And basically we run this and pair this up with our injector trigger wires, which are coming from the ECU. And we branch that one off like that. And then we branch this one off like this. And we would just cut them down to length. And then they would go to where you would need to go. Obviously you would cover these with heat shrink as well. All right. Now that we've got our injector power and coil powers spliced out. Um, I've just taken a very good educated guess about how long my coil powers will need to be. Um, these are way more than they will ever need to be in the car, which is great because I'm not gonna be caught short uh, getting that loom measured up. So that part's all good. What I'm just gonna do really quickly now is get some larger expandable braid and I'm just gonna simply measure this out to where our approximate break is gonna be in the loom. Uh, we measured this up in the car and I roughly made a mark on the wiring to say that this is where we're gonna start splitting to go up to bank one, bank two, and down to the crank sensor and the starter motor and the, uh, the positive power. So um, we'll just measure that from here two here within reason um, just so we can get these wires bent back around or going where they need to go. Getting this first bit of braid over can actually be very very painful. We've got to fit this entire loom just to get this down um, just down to this section so it is a little bit painful so if you can run and the next piece with it so you're not doing the same thing twice um, it can save a little bit of time. Um, 
I don't know if I'm going to do that or if I'm prepared enough to do that yet. So uh, we might just have to do this one for now and then we'll go from there. It's always an interesting and fun challenge. Um, will you, what you will notice is that I measured probably a really nice, beautiful length for exactly what I needed, but this stuff can be very, very tricky because as it actually needs to expand to get over this entire loom, it actually gets shorter. So often it is a bit of experience that will help you get this shaped and right for what you actually need. Um, this is not a very critical part of the loom because it will get covered by a lot of different heat shrinks and tapes um, just to protect it. Um, but I've actually come up probably just a little bit short with this braid. Um, it is often a good practice to measure it a little bit longer than it needs to, thread it all the way on, and then it might be a little bit short or it might be a little bit long. Hopefully you'd want it a little bit long so you could see where you would need or how much you would actually need to cut off that. Um, and you can take that back off, modify it, put it back on again. It is time consuming, but you do get a nicer result that way. In the Haltec Premium Loom, uh, we do give you a lot of uh, switch 12 volts and signal grounds uh, extra, and they're all bundled in a little group together. Um, there, so you've got enough to run down into the engine part of the loom and inside and supply switch 12 volts to all the right components that actually need it. Um, you may end up, just like I have, with a few left over. Um, Contrary to popular belief in the drift community, um, you do not twist the grounds and the powers together and for whatever reason terminate them and then put them in the loom. It's not going to end well. I'm talking about you, Anthony. So I've just protected and insulated the remaining ground and 12 volt wires. Um, I'm going to tuck them back into part of the main loom just to protect them. Um, they are there in case we need to do anything with them later on, but chances are we're just going to insulate them and protect them uh, within the loom itself. You can definitely cut them off closer to the source if you like. Um, I, for, for whatever reason, just like to keep them protected within the loom and not create too many cuts up here just in case anything shorts up here. You can also then go and protect and protect it just keeps making the loom a bit uglier and bulkier. So um, by all means, cut them off close to the source at the actual joints um, or you can insulate them like this. We've got our loom broken down, covered, somewhat insulated back to the interior. The grommet is gonna be in this rough area. I've actually put a red tape on there like I said I would. Um, so that's in place now. So we're gonna ignore the ignition coils for a second, um, but we're gonna throw some braid over the coolant temp and the brake hats that we've already sort of somewhat prepared. Um, so let's do that now. Uh, we've braided up our loom for the bank one. Um, just tried to do it as neat as possible. Um, I've measured out how far the injectors are away from each other on the actual manifold and just roughly made a guide and then roughly made our lengths equal exactly that there. 
and the spacing down here about the same so that they should reach and neatly plug in. Um, so what we're gonna do now is just crimp on our injector plugs uh, for at least this bank today. And then um, that'll probably be the end of the episode today. Um, I will go and do the other side, uh, which is gonna be exactly the same thing as we've done on this side. And then we'll come back the next episode and then we'll start fitting some wires back in the car, this entire loom back in the car to do some measuring up for the other components that we haven't done yet. So much like in Scott's How to Crimp Like a Pro video, I'm just gonna bear back a little bit of wire. When you twist all these wires together, it stops the any stray wires coming out the side and piercing through the side of this rubber seal, which inevitably stabs you right in the end of the finger, which is the worst kind of pain you can ever have. So, just gonna quickly slide the seals just to the end of the wire cover there, just like that. And we wanna make sure that we've got the pin We've got the wire situated in that part of the pin and we've got the part which is gonna hug and, and cradle the actual seal there. So that's about perfectly placed. So we're just gonna quickly hold that in place. Um, this, this can be quite fiddly. I like to try and hold the pin with the end of my finger and my nail like that if I can and then give it a quick crimp. So I'm gonna use the middle, which is D, to start, and then E. Uh, that click was not the pin, that was actually my hand. Um, that does that on the first time every single day. And then I'm gonna use the rounder seal, which is gonna be A. can be tricky to get the first time. Let's give that a quick pinch and see that pulls down on the seal. I've actually probably gone a little bit too far because I've started pinching one of the grips on the seal. Um, not to worry for this particular um, part because this is not the part that's actually making the electrical contact. This part up here is. Give that a good pull and we, we can see that that's not gonna go anywhere. Um, often people like to place the pin in the actual crimp first, in the crimper tool, um, just so it's situated in the right place, and then feed the wire in, and then give it a quick pinch. That click was actually the pin, not my hand this time. And that's crimped that down nicely. And then we're just gonna do the rubber. got our two pins. It doesn't matter, particularly on an injector, which wire is gonna go on which side. Um, it is a good, nice practice to get into to make sure they're all at least consistent. So whatever you do your first one, make sure you continue that same format down your loom. Um, it just makes fault finding a little bit easier later on um, when you've got this side of the plug, you can always know that this side of the plug will always be the positive and this side will always be the negative coming from the ECU. So we are going to slide the pin in place. This is a little locking tab which is going to click into the little uh, receptacle. Okay, that one's gone all the way in. It didn't click like I assumed it would. That one had a, the faintest ever click. You probably won't hear it, but I did hear that go in, so I know that they're all locked in. And slide my little bit of heat shrink just to protect the end of the braid and to complete a nice, neat look. Now that that's all done, I'm gonna go do another seven of these. Oh. Well, 
that was a pretty good day. Um, all the meticulous measuring and neatness and attention to detail has really come out because uh, we're actually getting some pretty cool results coming out the other end now, which is great. Um, so that's probably something you can take away from this episode is the more you measure, the more neat freak you are about everything, the neater and more amazing it looks on the other end. Have a good night, everyone.